I recently got this dreaded email from Google saying, we're writing to let you know that starting June 20th, 2024, the legacy Firebase cloud messaging APIs will be discontinued. What that means is if you're using Firebase for your cloud messaging, you will no longer be able to use the cloud messaging API legacy beginning June 20th, 2024. You will have no choice but to switch to Firebase cloud messaging API v1. This would have been great if not for the Google Firebase documentation. You could literally be spending days reading this documentation and still have no idea how it works. But thankfully, something called nextchat.ai now exists. This is the easiest way I know of to learn how to use the Firebase Cloud Messaging API v1. We'll go through how to start a conversation on nextchat.ai to learn how to use the Firebase Cloud Messaging API. You'll want to create a free account if you haven't already. Go ahead and log in. I'll go through this conversation I had with it. I also, if you click this global prompt library, you can search for it. I created a Firebase cloud messaging API. You can copy this. This is the conversation and paste it into your conversation and start asking questions. And so we'll go through these steps together. The first thing I asked is, do you know how the Firebase cloud messaging API v1 works? And thankfully it does. It tells you the different steps you have to go through. You first need to set up a Firebase project, which if you've already created a project, if you go to console.firebase.google.com, these are your projects. I'll just click on this one, Android app. The next step says you need to register your client devices. This has to do with the app itself. In your app code, you'll need to register your devices with FCM. This is usually done using a service like nativenotify.com to send push notifications with the Expo framework, the React Native framework, or the Flutter framework. Whenever you install whatever push notifications service you're using and you copy their code into your code. So for example, with native notify, all you have to do is import this register in in push token, copy this function into your app and you're already finished. This register in in push token will automatically do this next step for you. It will register the phone or the device that's using this app to FCM for you. So this step again is just all about the push notification service you decide to use. It then goes through talking about how to send messages receive messages, get reports. And so then I asked for more detail. I mentioned how I'm currently using the cloud messaging API legacy, which if you come back to your Firebase app, click this gear icon in the top left corner, click project settings. That's where you can go to your cloud messaging. And down here is the cloud messaging API legacy. And as you can see, it's also saying you have to migrate to this by February 23rd, 2024. So this is normally what I I used to send push notifications, a server key like this. But now I need to know how to use the Firebase cloud messaging API instead. And so I explained that to NextChat. I said, I'm currently using the old way, but Google is telling me I need to upgrade to the new way. And I just asked, how would I send push notifications using the new way? Can you still use an API to send the requests? Can you show me an example? Then it showed me how to do it. So if you still want to use an HTTP post request to send a push notification, notification. This is what your endpoint will look like. And the only part here you need to update is your project ID. If you come back to your Firebase app, go to general right here. Again, we're still, if you click this gear icon in the project settings, if you go to general, that's where you can find your project ID right here. It should look something like this. If you hover over the question mark, it says a user assigned unique identifier for your Firebase project. This identifier may appear in URLs or names for some Firebase Firebase resources. So that there is what you would copy and paste into this post request where it says project ID. And then here is an example of the request. You could say post. Here's the post endpoint, the host fcm.googleapis.com. This is some of the information that can go in your header. For authorization, this is the important part, and this is not in the documentation. You'll need to have an authorization in your header with a bearer with your access token right here. And I'm about to explain how to get your access token. And then you would send the rest like normal. You'd send a message to your user device token. This is the token generated on your phone, on your device that is registered with FCM. And here's the notification. And here's if you want to send data with it, how you send data. So my next question was, how do I get the your access token? Because again, 
if you go to the Firebase Cloud Messaging API, learn more, it doesn't tell you because Google likes to keep you on your toes. It doesn't want to make things simple. If they wanted to make it simple, they would have your access token somewhere like, I don't know, the general section where the project ID is. But no, that again would just be too easy. In reality, your access token is not even found on the Firebase website. You have to go to a different website. Again, I love how Google wants to keep you on your toes. Thankfully though, nextchat.ai makes things super simple. When I asked how do I get your access token, it says you first have to enable FCM API for your project. And it says go to this link here. So I'm going to open this link in a new tab. When you come here, you want to make sure you're logged into the correct account. You should then see your apps here, all your projects from Firebase, which again can be found here, should now be found here in this cloud.google.com console. And if it's not, you can click create project, but they should be there if you're logged into the correct account. So it says look for Firebase cloud messaging API, make sure it's enabled. So for example, I was in the Android app. I'm going to click that. You can control F and look for Firebase cloud messaging API. Click on that and then look here at this status. You want to make sure this says enabled. If this is not enabled, you'll need to enable it. And I believe you'll be able to do that up here. There's a button up here that says disable API. So I'm assuming if it's not enabled currently, you could probably click a button button up here that says enable API. I just have to take some time to say how much my blood is boiling right now. I cannot believe a $2 trillion company doesn't know how to write good documentation. I can't believe I have to go all over the web just to get the simplest thing to work. Anyway, the next step is create a service account. So this part is important. It says navigate to the service accounts page. I'm going to right click that, open that up. Again, you'll want to make sure you're in the right account. Okay. And so this took me to this service accounts page right here. I'm going to again click on Android app. It says click create service account and provide a name and optional description and choose a role such as Firebase admin SDK administrator. Click create. There's a chance that was already done on firebase.google.com when you set up your app. So for me, I already had all of that filled out down here. So I did not need to click create service account. It was already there. So if it's already there, you do not have to click create service account. But if it is not there, you should click create service account, follow the instructions. And then once it's down here, you can click on it, make sure that account service is currently active, you can name it whatever you want, give it a description. So once you've reached this page here, where you'll see details, permissions, keys, metrics, logs, you can go on to the next step, which is generate the access token. The way you generate the access token is if you come back here, click this keys button, right here keys come down here click add key click create new key say json click create then it will download a json file for you now this next step you could use python to generate the access token for you but a much easier way is to just click close this and your key will show up here so finally we have reached the point of finding our key our access token key it's right here it shows up right there so this number right here here would be your access key. And so then if you come back to the example found at nextchat.ai, you would put this access token here in your bearer, your access token, replace your access token with that, and you're officially set. You can now send push notifications using the new Firebase Cloud Messaging API. Let me know in the comments below how the Firebase documentation makes you feel. Does it make you feel all warm and fuzzy inside? Or does it make you want to bash your head through a window. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below too. I'll try my best to answer any questions you have. Like the video if you'd like to see more content like this. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when more videos come out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.